I own it. That is mine. It's what mine. do you mean? It's mine. It's mine. I it's do that. Mine? I support people through me. That doesn't make any sense. No, nope. it doesn't. Nope. That's not what I meant to say, but that's okay. I like supporting people with my own money because sometimes I actually have a little bit of money to support people. Y'all don't know what we were talking about coming on in, but that's basically what it was. It was just supporting people and and, you know. That's it. It's a Friday. We were at PAX last week. We're still tired. Are you punchy? <laughs> we're still tired and punchy. Oh. Anyways, hi, hi everyone. It's Friday, which means it's time for another Paint and Slay IMV. Above me is Lauren. And today we're going to be working on finishing up the two Gith Yankee minis that we had started over the past couple of episodes. And then we're going to have some fun. Uh, in between, because we're going to do like this really cool assembly line thing happening. We're going to jump into working with the WizKids Drow Fighter. However, when I took a look at this fellow, I said, this fellow reminds me of someone. This fellow reminds mm. me of someone that has been getting much attention lately. Um, so we're going to have some fun and paint this miniature up to look like a Starion from Baldur's Gate 3, who is also, quite frankly, floating around in the game, uh, you know, like right now uh yeah. along with his mind flyer skin so yeah lauren uh, let's let's start off with a star and go from there with everything else we have happening this week because there's there's the happenings <laughs> there's a lot although we're finally kind of we, we got through all the big 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 stuff from the beginning of the week so now we get to just enjoy it right it's no longer keeping up with all the new stuff coming out it's now like hey look because honestly just hanging out with a star is enough right Right. Like th this I mean, has been the week. Yeah. It's been the week of a star in between uh, the interview I did yesterday with his writer and him joining Idol Champions and the new skin. And now we're going to be painting a little mini. Right. Uh, it's 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 all good. It's all a star in all the time because, hey, you know, Baldur's Gate is kind of a fun game and we've been <laughs> enjoying it. Also, thank you, Bellswin, for all of the, yes. the gift subs. I hope you enjoy your emotes. And uh, I <laughs> Also, I just love that this comes with Leech the Boar. Right? It's we had adorable. To. We had to. Mm -hmm. It's just too perfect. My brain also yep. went to, this is the dawning of the age of Astarion in my head. When we started yes, talking about all the do I mean, dawning of the age of Astarion. They would totally, they would totally be behind that, right? Uh, I don't know if you saw the animated short. That got that got put yeah. out today. That's yeah. a but look. We're out of out of yes. a pre-release, and it's the, <laughs> that's really well animated. If you it haven't was. seen that, after the show, go look it up. It's super funny. Yeah. Um, but yes, uh, the Astarian in the game, 
Uh, you still have a little while to unlock mm -hmm. him and get all of his lovely, lovely gear. But hey, if you need help, we do have um, the weekend buffs happening, which should be live right now. Uh, if you have signed up for the newsletter, you should be getting an email sometime in the next couple of hours with the lethal combinations weekend information mm -hmm. and the lethal gold chest. Um you know, to help out with mm -hmm. all of that. And you might notice that it's Lazelle and also Omen is hanging out in there. That's right? because season five began. And yeah, there we go. I love this art so much. I, I love it. Fan. I am such a fan. Yeah. It really it's so cool. Awesome. Yeah. And especially after to, I was we're go probably ahead. going the same direction. Like especially since we got to see it on like the major big screen at the live event. The key art was there featured front and center. Oh my God. It looks so good. It so looks we're so good. <laughs> so behind the scenes, we're sitting there before the show starts because we went to see the live Acking game. And V and I got very, very good seats. Thank you, thank you, thank yes. you. And we're sitting there and they've got the big screens up on either side showing like the pre-roll stuff. And all of a sudden, in giant size on the big screen, it's the Idol Champions. Mm -hmm. And it, it just looked super cool. And was... I don't know if I've seen V jump in joy out of a seat that quickly it was, <laughs> was it was there, amazing like... i was i was because you were off to my left and i'm looking at the right? screen i'm like hey and i just see you go yes <laughs> because i was like oh my god did that get through to who it needed to get through because i sent that sucker to penny arcade like three times <laughs> yep yep because like, you know there's a lot going on exactly so, yes if you watch, I don't know how much of the pre-roll they have in the video that goes up on YouTube, but you should, no matter to. what, yeah. you should go and go watch old. such a good game. Seriously. Uh, <laughs> that yeah. was an super, amazing super cool. game. Yeah. And then, and... And, and then I'll just say, I've talked about this a little bit, but then the next day I got to see the vampire game that Jason Carl ran that includes three of the four of mm -hmm. them and watching two different DMs masterfully deal with the chaos that is jasmine um uh jerry. i almost said jim and omen yeah jerry and mike is <laughs> yeah. beautiful yeah so that was a lot of fun uh, is that everything um i think that's for, it the for anniversary now. is still going on yes that's the other thing i'm like there's something else the that's anniversary the is still going on if you have not logged into the game go ahead and log in and pick up your anniversary chest because hey more free stuff all this is free all this is Absolutely. just go and play the game Yes. Oh, um, yes. Rat with wings. The, I'm still laughing over the ping pong ball uses a mini. I died. Yes. I died. That was fantastic. It was. That was so good. Such that a good was, way to handle it. Not only that, like, you know, they, they come ready with these elaborate yeah. dioramas and the minis and the whole thing. And then for Perkins to just have a ping pong ball on hand just in case is so classic amazing dm like that's mm -hmm. just every everybody's home experience is just like i don't was, have a mini for this like that's that's just what it's there like you it's go. so per it was so so perfect but yeah yep um we have one if other you... thing that's sort of hanging above our heads not well no it's not not hanging above our heads we have one other thing but i think we probably want to wait until midway to share it just to be sure i love it um because it's if it... something cute we're gonna make you gonna wait say. for the cute. It's we're gonna cute. make you. <laughs> it's cute, and you're just gonna have to wait for it. Um, so the only other thing I'll say is, if you do have any questions for us today, either about Idol Champions or about mini painting or about Pax West, go ahead and put those in the chat with question in big capital letters, because the amazing Gabe is here for us today, grabbing questions, helping out, being a moderator, doing all of the cool stuff, so that we can continue to paint minis. So. Yes. Uh, Okay. Go ahead and put those on in there, and then and then you'll just have to wait for the cute. Yep. Sorry. Not sorry. <laughs> so, anyways, now that I put my hair up with a paintbrush, because I realized it's getting hot in here for some... Oh, no, I know why it's getting hot, because I'm streaming and my computer's cranking out more air. <laughs> um, so, we're going to, like I said, we're going to kind of be doing an assembly line. So, this is how far we've gotten with our Gith Yankee fighter figures from WizKids. Again, these are the D&D Knowles. There's marvelous miniatures. They come primed ahead of time. You don't need to worry about that step. You can actually just pull them right out of the packaging and start painting to your heart's desire. It's a beautiful thing. Um, so we're going to definitely finish these two up today. But actually, we're going to get started with our Astarion soon to be mini. Oh, um, okay. So I should put them on. Yes, the you're okay. going to want you're going to want um, the Astarion in the making, because what we're going to do is we're going to do a um, quick Xenothel treatment 
before we actually start painting him. Because when I was looking at all the official art from Baldur's Gate and everything like that, dude knows how to find the light, okay? Like in all the reference art, he's got like that Morticia Adams thing where it's like the light just falls perfectly on a certain side. So I thought we'd nod to that and pull in some zenithal lighting. So it's one of the many powers you get when you become a vampire spawn is right? you know, like, super strength and super speed and the ability to find the perfect light good. in any situation. Right? So <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, we have to play around with this a little bit. Let's let's try and capture that if we can. All so right. what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take this mini and um, I also behind the scenes, Lauren, you might notice like it depends because sometimes these minis don't have it. This one had an extreme hair flip at the bottom. So it was like kind of doing this at the bottom. I don't know if yours is. So oh, I ended up a little filing bit, yeah. that down. Um, you don't have to, but mine was so extreme. It almost looked like um, it was a disengaged collar, which can happen oh. sometimes. So I ended up filing that flip of the hair down. Um, so you may notice that's missing from my mini. Um, I just sort of, I, I gave him a haircut ahead of time. Um, and yes, I know that Astarian has more of a curlier coif. Um, but we're going more for, let's call this a starry just got out of the rain. I don't know. Slick back hair is starry and it's a new look. Um, yeah. so we're going to have some fun with playing around with this and, uh, getting into using this drow fighter and doing a custom paint to make it look more like this fellow down Aya is the plan. So we're going to start getting him covered all in black. And while black. he's drying, we can move back over to the Githyanki and keep getting them on the way to completion. So this actually works out for us, having the extra minis to kind of um, back and forth with. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm assuming this is a watered down just a tiny bit because we're Water just... Yep, exactly. Because we're just trying to get that dark uh, layer in there first. Cool. But we yeah, don't want to be super thick. Yeah, my, my black is usually... So uh... is mine lately. Again, I blame the heat. I wonder also if if on some of these I'm finally getting down to like the last third maybe Possibly. I mean these maybe these have lasted for quite a while even though they look like small paint I mean, pots so maybe I've just reached reached some of that point. I have so much you. paint that is just sitting in bottles still and it's kind of like well I'll get to it eventually and then WizKids graciously shares more stuff with us and I'm like well I may not get to it all. <laughs> nope, nope. I have an entire oh. box in there of minis. Yeah. that some of which are for future use on the show and some of them are just i need to eventually do TV? something with them exactly gotta so do we'll something see. let me adjust the camera here just slightly so yeah i'm gonna start um there's really not an official rhyme or reason to it per se uh, i'm gonna start from top to bottom and as you can see i thin this out so that it's kind of going on more like a glaze yeah so this does two things for us. It pops out the details a little bit more so you can see everything that's happening. But then it also gets into those recesses that will just help amplify everything as it goes on. Yeah, because there's a, a lot of detail, like chest, shoulders, mm -hmm. and neck. Just in that part of this mini, there's yeah. a ton of really cool detail yeah. that... Even when we get Can to be here with the breaches, mm. look at the difference between the breaches. There's all this fun detail that comes out yeah. as soon as we do this. So that's why I am doing this quick little treatment. And I may do two layers of the black just to darken it up a little bit more. But as Lauren mentioned before, we want to make sure this is thin so it's not overloading the miniature's details. Uh, again, because basically acrylic paint is plastic. When it dries, it hardens up. So if you have thick paint going on, you're basically creating another thick layer into the miniature, which then likes to ompa chompa up any details that are left. And you don't want yeah. to do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's always it's... easier to put a second layer on. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to take a layer off. It is that. Are we doing the base as well? Just just yep. the whole thing? The whole kit and caboodle. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Um, and we did have a couple questions come on in. Okay, cool. Oh, the Geronathus Geron wants to know, is Walnut an EG champ? Evergreen? No. Uh, not an evergreen. If you mean evergreen, then no. Uh, she is a, a, um, she is an event champ that you can get from a time gate and stuff like that. If, if 
you mean something else by EG? Let me know. As we said at the beginning, it's Friday. Both of us are punchy. So if I'm mm. misunderstanding what you're asking about, uh, that's on me. Just let me know. But no, she mm. is. Uh, she actually came out a while ago. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, she is a uh, an event champion uh, that you can get from Time Gates. And uh, Puppy Cat wants to know, when do you get the Acquisitions Incorporated Renown Pack for logging in? So that is a um, a special thing that's happening with Steam players. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you, if you're playing on Steam and log in, it should automatically happen. And it should have happened this week. So if you've played it all this week on Steam, uh, it should just automatically be credited to you. If for some reason it's not, let us know and we'll see if we can fix that. But it is for our, our lovely Steam players. We do... We try to do special things for all mm -hmm. of our players, but they don't always line up on all of the different platforms because, you know, not all the platforms want to work at the same time. So this week it was Steam. Uh, we've done stuff for Epic. We've just done stuff for uh, bunches of other stuff. Um, so, yeah, as soon as you log in, you should get that. Uh, the other stuff that's for everybody is the anniversary celebration. Like I said, uh, you'll need to go to the... The little square at the top middle of the screen, this is anniversary celebration. And it's all in like, it's all in fun pinks and blues. And you click on that and it'll open up the anniversary screen where you can pick up the birthday chest for today, which would have just rolled over. Um, nice. And once you get four of the seven chests, that's when you unlock the special uh, walnut skin and funness. Yay. All right. Very cool. Um, so I'm going to let this dry. I may do another layer. I may not. I'm debating it. Me, me, me. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see um, when it dries a little bit more. Yeah, that's what I want to see. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to jump back over to the Gift Yankee. And we're going to start working on those finer details that were left from last week, which means you want to grab some leather brown because we're going to do those straps that are left. We got a couple straps done on the one, but there's other straps we need to finish up. And then we will work on the hair. And from the hair, we'll go to, well, I still need to do the gold circlet thing. I don't know if you do. Uh, I did, I got that on, I think I got that on both of them. I'll have to double check. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think by the time you realized that the circlet was there on both of them and that it right. wasn't, because I originally thought that that was the, the bottom of a hat. So Fair. by the time we realized it, you had gotten off the gold, but I still had the gold. So I was right. able to You were able jump to ahead. get that going. Where my small brush? It Is walked brush? away. It oh, said it no is. way. There you are. Tiny, tiny brush. Itty bitty living space. Phenomenal brush. Okay. So what straps have I missed? Yeah, there's those straps holding on the the leg armor. Yep. Um, I got that one strap across the chest, but I feel like I'm probably missing something else. So I'll just I'll get started on the legs, and we'll go from there. Yeah, you'll notice as you flip it around. Got some leather brown where I don't want it to be. Mm. Yeah, so let's remove it. Yeah. And then there's the little bit right here on the arm. I appreciate that this mini actually shows that, hey, armor pieces don't just float there for funsies. You, right? you do actually have to strap them to on. Be secured. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not that I really care too much about the, the reality of my fantasy armor pieces, but it's always fun when, when it's at least nodded to, if not. Right. Yeah. Listen. I'm okay suspending disbelief in some situations, but yeah, floating armor is, is one that's a little bit harder to wrap my head around. <laughs> yeah. Unless it's mage armor, then that's a different story. The funny thing being, for me, it's less about the reality of it, of like, oh, well, that's that's unrealistic as far as like 
Mm -hmm. uh whether it would stand or not and more just the practicality of it of like okay you've and maybe this is me watching too many youtube videos of uh jill barrett talking about armor reviews uh but like so you've decided to armor up the top of your thigh but nothing else (laughs) (laughs) i mean i know i know movement is important but there was a decision made there that is a very interesting decision yeah Oh, absolutely. But like I said, it's it's all fantasy, so mm-hmm. um, I'm willing to be like, this is funny, but also it's cool looking, and I guess that's all that matters. Yeah. He looks good. I don't think I see any other straps on on two sword two swordsmen. Okay. I think. If you think you got it all, then you're good. Yeah, because the arm wraps are wrap wraps. Right. Oh, there are, um, because you do have, I'll have to hold on one second. So actually, we do have uh, connection points up here. That kind of get pulled into the wraps. Hmm. So I'm just going to go in and quickly... Paint a stripe around the upper portion of the wrist. See there? I think so. They they mesh in deeply with the wrap, so they're a little bit harder to see. Yeah. And there's one right here that starts closer to the elbow. That one I see. The, yeah. the upper one... Number one is definitely hiding, but I do see the lower one. Also, thank you to everybody in chat who are helping some of our new folk find chests and get answers to things. Um, Like I said, we're always happy to try to answer stuff, but I'm, you know, we're painting. And so it's easy for us to either miss or take a little bit longer to answer. So, uh, Appreciate all the folks in chat who are helping out. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we've got a, a bunch of new folks who started. Yes, welcome. Yeah. And again, if you want Gabe to snag a question for us, don't forget in caps question colon. I think. All right, I'm gonna move on to the other one because I j- I just keep looking for straps, and I'm failing. So. Okay. Henry Lowenwind. That breastplate surely looks cool with that hole in the middle, but are you aware of what's inside your body at that exact location? Exactly. Right? It's like right right there. Right mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. That's the part you chose to leave open and ready for attack. Fuck yeah. It's like, yeah, I know you're 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 a you're a Dexy beast. I know it's probably gonna be Dexy hard to beast. hit you. <laughs> I mean, I'm under the assumption that at least the original minis are intended to be monks or monk adjacent that's mm-hmm. what they look like to me mm-hmm. and so being all dexy makes a ton of sense but eventually you are going to get hit and uh this one shoulder pauldron while cool is only gonna do so much so it's just the fact you said dexy beast and i'm like this is amazing mm. that is a turn of phrase i didn't know i needed to hear today but here we are and i'm thrilled we used to, uh, I used to say Dexy boy, but you know, this, these yep. could be women. These could be non-binary. So I, I've turned it into Dexy beast. That's, that's just it. It's it's fantastic. I am here for the Dexy beast <laughs> reference. Mm-hmm. They're bringing also, Dexy back as Rat bringing, Wing says. Mm-hmm. Bringing the Dexy back. I'm bringing Dexy back. What? And I'm a fan of monks. <laughs> monks are super fun to play. Oh, I have played a monk. A monk, a monk, you have played a uh, a monk for a one shot or for yeah, a... for something. What was it? yeah? I don't even remember for what. How's that? Um, it was cool. Oh, I yeah. know it was. I was like helping out the DM because they had so many PCs on the ta- NPCs on the table. I'm like, dude, I can here. Just give me another one. <laughs> I can ah, manage nice. two more. I can manage the two. Give me the two. <laughs> That's what it was. That makes sense. Monks yeah. are. While they have a lot of versatility, especially in combat, they do tend to have 
a very specific move set. So they're not, they're yeah. not like casters that can be very complicated. Right. Um, unless you were a super high level, in which case monks just go 34 times on their turn, yeah. <laughs> which is also why I love them. Well, it's like I'm in a game on uh, Tuesdays and the one fellow plays a monk. Mm-hmm. And there are times I just kind of sit back and I listen to all the attacks that he's got going on. I'm just like, damn. Yeah. I was impressed. Monks are the exact opposite of barbarians. Barbarians hit once, but who do they hit super hard? They hit, yeah. Monks hit 12 times, but each time is is a little, just a little, but they add up. Oh, they they definitely add up. They big time add up. Um, yeah, it's actually, it's a lot of fun because, you know, he comes in with his, I don't want to call it brute force, his, um, Dexy force. How's that? Yeah. And then I play a little star druid and she comes in and she goes all radiant mode and she's doing all these other things. <laughs> That's awesome. It is fun. I think my favorite moment with a monk, I've, I've, I've played quite a few monks now I think about it, but uh, in the more recent times, mm-hmm. uh, I brought Itovan into a one shot. This is a while ago. This is a couple months ago. And Itovan is my uh, my little kobold astral arms monk, mm. who is my favorite um. character to bring into one shots if. Uh, if there's not something specific I need to be doing and I just want to mm-hmm. kind of come in and support everybody, oh, yeah. I bring in Itovan because he just wants to punch people in the face and he runs in. It's great. Mm-hmm. Um, we we're playing a super high level game and I don't remember if it was an ancient or an adult dragon. It might have been an ancient red dragon because I think Ooh. we were like 16, 17, 18. We were high level uh-huh. and I just plunked Itovan in front of the dragon's face. And and was like, I'm going to annoy you and you're going to pay attention to me. <laughs> because he was so hard to hit. Uh-huh. And at that level, monks have evasion. So even when the breath oh, weapon yeah. went off, Itovan would just dance in front of the breath weapon. And as long as I made my save, which was almost impossible to miss, I, I pretty much had to roll a one to miss my save. Uh-huh. He just took no damage. So there'd be this epic 70 points worth of fire damage and the Nudo Von be standing there going, ah, that tickled. <laughs> so the way of the toddler, basically. It, oh, Nudo Von is such a joy. I love it. Yeah. Did he do a That's lot amazing. of damage? No, but... No, uh, it definitely he, helped with strategy. He, he kept the dragon's attention off of the yeah. people who had slightly less dexterity. And it was, it was super fun. See, that's playing your character smart. Being smart with your uh, assets. And Itovan's assets are he's fast. It's he's still adorable a good one too. to have. <laughs> he, I'm here he for is it. Very adorable, but that's that he doesn't lean into the adorableness too much. Aw. Yeah, I need to start plotting a game for the. Um... MS Society, a charity event we're both doing something for, actually, folks. Heads yeah. up! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, in a couple of weekends, we're going to be DMing. Not at the same time. We have two separate games happening. Uh, but I realized, I'm like, oh, that's that's the thing I need to plan this weekend. Yeah, it's coming up super fast. I don't yeah. know if they've made any announcements yet, but it's no, not. No, not yet. It's not a. It's still in the works. It's, it's still in the works, but it's not one of those things that we can't at least hint about yeah. because, like. It's a charity thing. It is, exactly. Get ready for it. It should be fun. Yeah. We'll share more details when we have more details to share with you. How's that, folks? Um, Absolutely. If you want to have fun in a couple weekends, um, Laura and I will be DMing at separate times and doing some fun things with great casts, players. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to it. But I'm plotting because I'm going to... I already told my players I'm going to take them back to the Margrave which is this really cool forest in Midgard, if you're familiar with Cobalt Press stuff. Yeah. I have yet to decide what I'm going to do, but I don't have, uh, I don't know all of my players yet. And a lot mm. of the times, uh, especially with it being a short amount of time, we have to plot and plan. Right. What I usually like to do is find out from the players if anybody has a specific fun request of like, hey, I've always wanted to do a this. Uh, Got it, yeah. 
that's also usually where I can convince entire parties of people to be like, hey, everybody, why don't you all play kobolds? That'll be fun. Right. Uh, Kinra, Ooh, go ahead. Uh, you can definitely what? I'm definitely going to steer into the hilarity for this one. Yeah. One shots in general. Especially charity ones. It goes over so much better. Yeah. But anywho. There's been a couple of times, a couple of times where I've done serious one shots, but that's always been by request. Got uh, it. And those are also, they can be super fun because if everybody's in on it, uh, oh, yeah. there's something nice about that change of pace but yeah mm -hmm. it has to be has to be a very specific request yeah yeah so what mm. was going to, what was going to happen oh kindra vip was asking hi lauren and v are you observing star trek day today may you both live long and prosper and never get replaced by a changeling oh. or doppelganger thank you hey why is it star trek day is this like kirk's birthday or something that i missed i'm trying to recall on my end i'm gonna do another quick layer on this fellow because a portion of this decided not to stick. Oh, I should probably check on that as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I feel like I'm. I'm. I've forgotten a crucial. I've forgotten a crucial date. Um, ah. TV premiered. Uh, the TV premiere in 1966. Got it. That makes sense. Okay. Trust me, I am a fan of the Star Trek. Absolutely. I grew up on the it. Stars the stars and the treks. The stars and the treks, all of it. Um, I have I have my favorite captain. I have my favorite series. I bet I have entertained watching others and such. But considering this is news to me, am I honoring it? Huh? Um, we are right now. Happy Star right Trek now. Day. Happy Star Trek Day. Live there you go. Prosper. Live and do the, you know, Spock hands. Doing. I, I appreciate that the date that is international is international or just a Star Trek day. I, I appreciate that this day uh, is in relation to a premiere or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and not just, hey, May the 4th sounds like May the Force uh, be with you. Yep, so May yep. the 4th is now Star Wars Day. Yep, exactly. <laughs> and then you have Revenge of the 5th. Mm-hmm. Because of Revenge of the Sith. Uh, Fruity McNutty said, says, I always thought wizards were complicated, but after I played one the first time, I had a blast being the knowledgeable person that knows lore about things and such. Yeah, right? They, they're, they're more complicated to set up than some classes. Yeah. But I think once you get rolling with wizards, um, they're not necessarily complicated. They've got a giant spell list, but right. the, the complicated part is like, okay, what are in my spell book? And then what am I taking from my spell book to prepare later? But once mm -hmm. you get that, that prep done, it's not so bad. And yeah, it is. There's not a lot of classes or characters that focus on intelligence. So when you are the character with like arcana or history or, or religion with those intelligence Juicy, juicy history roles. Right. It's super fun. Yeah. I played a little wizard. And I say little because she's a gnome. Um, Speranza de Sonyi. Mm -hmm. And she, I enjoyed playing her greatly. She was absolutely adorable. Um, I was playing her on a Friday stream over for Nerdarchy. The problem was... Um, Turns out Fridays in high school and kids in school, that turns into a really tricky night. So I had to yeah. bow out. I had to bow out on that one. But um, no, she was a lot of fun to play. And it was like the first time I actually delved into genuinely playing a wizard. Hmm. But I forgot what I did. Somehow I managed to get it so that she was also with like healing under her belt. So I was like, well, I'm I'm the healer wizard. <laughs> Is how it turned yeah. out. I think I took a feat. I want to say I added in a feat. It might have been the healer feat. That's, I think that's what that's, it was. Yeah. I have to go back and look at the character sheet. But yeah. Yeah. That okay, makes the so most sense. Another. Although, depending on the type of wizard, you never know. Yeah. I have to go back and look. But she was fun because she could do wizardy things. But then if someone was like, because we were all glass cannons. As soon as someone was like, not doing so, I'm like, oh, wait, I have this thing. I can heal you. <laughs> <laughs> so you can I can help. another class, but I'm going to freaking be a healer still. 
someone's gotta right? someone's gotta do it yep um okay so now we're gonna go back to the back to the gith yankee if you're finished with another coat on the astarion to be yes and uh let us do the hair and the beards oh i have a typo and i'm not mad at it dark flesh tone on the hair and bears <laughs> That's a different mini. It's a That's different a mini. Completely, completely different mini. Uh, Super but yeah, different mini. Flesh tone, and we'll get that going on to the hair and the beards. <laughs> I mean, dark flesh tone would be great on a bear mini. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. It's a nice warm brown. Oh, good Lord. That's too where, funny. I know. I pulled you. Dark flesh tone. Where are you? He's That's hiding. Nice. That's dead white. Yeah, dead white. I mean, if you want to make one look a little bit more senior and maybe level. I didn't pull it. Uh oh. Phone light. Well, I may have to grab it. Maybe I was it's a displacer beast. Ah. I've pale flush and elfic flush, but I forgot. Oh, yeah. you might have did you pull just the Astarian colors and not keep out the other colors? That might be why. That's probably why. That's probably why. Mm. Dark flush gem. Yes. All right. He's okay. okay. That's dead fish. I mean, that would be an interesting color combination because that's pretty much the skin tone. <laughs> I rest. All right, where am I gonna? There's my dark. You go hiding. All right, well, you? now I'm annoyed. I'm still green. Oh. There it is. Aha. Uh -huh. It was da -da. not in alphabetical order. Well, that's why I went hiding on you. Um, okay. I'm painting over where the circlet is going to go just to make sure I have a nice smooth line there. Okay. Um, but Lauren, since you've already painted that, you're you're good to just kind of skirt around however you so choose. Now well, let's take a look. Take a look. It's in a book. We I love that move. show. And it's just straight dark flesh shown on the yep. hair and the beards and the braids. Exactly. And the... You got it. Cool. Ah, thank you, Fruity McNutty. Uh, they, they said, I love your tab tavern mug. It looks authentic. Uh, that's because it kind of is, although it's not like a, a ye old tavern mug. Um, I picked this up a couple of years ago, the last time I went to go visit my folks in Buffalo, because that is where I was born and raised. And so this is a mug from one of my favorite places to go for wings specifically, but I mean, it's just a fun place to go. Buffalo Brew Pub, um, 2011. That's when I would have gone <laughs> because it's the 25th anniversary mug from okay, cool. 2011. So yeah, it is nice. it, one of my favorites. It's And it does the, the nice thing. I, I won't show it because I'll spill all my drink, but the bottom of oh. it has... Um, it's not felt, but it's the covering on the bottom right, so the that you cork. don't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's nice. That is nice. That's nice. Okay, here. Come here. Let us. I'm going to try to avoid the circlet and we'll we'll see how that goes. And if yeah. I fail, then I'll just paint over it. Exactly. And go back repaint and it. Yeah. Come here. I cannot of the sea, and I need to be able to see. It does help with painting minis. Yeah, you know. A little bit of a concept, isn't it? Have light to see what you're painting. <laughs> uh, Caitlin Bryce says, it's been a while since I've heard the uh, reading Rainbow song. Uh, I've actually... I mean... Oh, I've... I hear it quite often, uh, weekly, because my Saturday game, I have a, a offline, it's not a streamed game, it's a Saturday game with a bunch of awesome people. Uh, we we sometimes can't get together every Saturday because, you know, yeah. schedules. Um, but a while back, an NPC was introduced, and because they were a a book vendor and a person with a wide variety of knowledge uh they ended up being named burton oh i love it in 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 all love and so now 
every week there's always a moment where I have the, the theme song in my head. It makes me happy. Aw. That's adorable. Yeah, one of those moments in where, like, you get to name an NPC and then... Mm -hmm. And then it, it just brings you in-game and out-of-game joy. Right. Now, those are always great when you have one of those, like, sort of nods to something in real life, but also is endearing in the game itself. Oh, I'm trying to get the hair behind the ears. is It's tricky. This is, this is a little finite detail going on here. Yeah. I appreciate that. There is there is that little bit of hair behind the ears, but also there's a little bit of hair behind the ears. Yeah, how to get? I have to go out from under camera because the camera is getting exactly where I need to be angle wise. There's that no happens. Way. Oh, it it definitely does happen. Okay, there we go. Now onto the other braid and under the beard. All right, I think. I think a lot of things. I'll look at that again. <laughs> uh, Ken Rivip wants to know, but do you have an oboe arrangement for the Reading Rainbow theme? That is a good question. Have I ever played the Reading Rainbow theme? I don't know. Ooh, challenge. I'll accepted. look that up later, and I might file that away for for a later oboe playing. Thank you. Yeah. There you go. Uh, DJ Crucible says, what size brush is being used on the Gith Yankee? Uh, I don't know what V is using, two but I'm using zero. my, my, my tiniest, tiny, tiny. Yeah. It's a two over zero from right across game. It's a yeah. really good detail brush. I like it a lot. Yeah. With these guys, we are, uh, in on the super fine details. So the, the yeah. tiniest of brushes, I've got my five over zero out. Mm -hmm. Just keep it nice and small. Yep, that's the way you got to do it sometimes. Um, uh, Ni Price Patu says, "How come you don't use a mic microscope to paint them? Must be because I need glasses." Um, so I have. I don't know how to describe it. I, so I have an old ring light that I'm using, uh, so that I get light directly mm -hmm. on the mini, which helps, and then. Uh, yeah, I have used, not for mini painting yet, but for when I'm making oboe reeds, which is essentially the same thing except with wood, uh, I have used a, it's essentially a magnifying glass, but it's big and wide and it's specifically for like magnification of close up small things that you don't need mm -hmm. a microscope for. Uh, mm -hmm. And V, I know you've talked about reading glasses in the past for helping with this. Yep. I, I go to reading glasses myself. Um because for my own eyes, like I'm actually, for the most part, pretty good um, to, to the point where my optometrist is like, okay, you're, you're getting to be of a certain age. We need to check and see if you need readers. And I told them like, no, I think I'm pretty good. Mm -hmm. She's like, oh yeah, yeah. She's like, yeah, everyone says that. She goes, let's go. And so she had me reading the lines and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And I get to like, you know, the, the line where she's like, yeah, okay, you're fine. She goes, can you read the one underneath it? Ah. <laughs> and I did. She goes, Okay, so you're like really good at seeing small details. I'm like, I paint minis. That might have something to do with it, perhaps. Mm -hmm. uh, Lots so of far, experience. I, I, you know, I will tap into doing like reading glasses if I'm tired um, and my eyes aren't quite as sharp. So I'll do like this. These are like first level reading glasses type of thing. Like 1.0 or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll pop these on. And I like these because then I can look down and paint and then look back up and see what's going on around me. Um, whereas I didn't, I have tried the other, like the big, like you almost look like an artificer type of thing. I didn't yeah. like wearing those. They actually gave me like vertigo. Um, and so I don't do the goggles, uh, but I will do glasses, like little readers as needed. Yeah. Those big chunky goggles, the ones you're talking about while they're yeah. real nice, they are very, very heavy. Yeah. I have a tiny little bit of experience with those. Uh, see, that's good to know. It wasn't just me. who was like, whoa. I beg your pardon, sir. Nope. What you what you lose in comfort, you gain in facility, because yeah. they have all the options. There you go. Okay, so I'm gonna let that head of hair dry. Head and beard, I should say. Pop him down. Switch over. Switch. 
Oh yeah, I almost forgot about the beard on this this one. La, 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 bitch. Sorry, that is me doing what I do every single time I pick up my Nintendo Switch. I sing the Will Smith Switch song. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. I'd almost forgotten about the beard. Yeah, no problem. The beards are a thing. Okay, I'm going to move to the other one and let that dry for a little bit. Hell yeah. All right, pointy. Pointy get the Yankee. Let's do this. Pointy get Yankee? I'm, the, I'm doing the pointy one now. Oh, one oh, the oh, like, the, you! Yeah. yeah. Yeah, these poses kind of remind me of like really cool anime superhero style poses. Yeah. Very uh, Dragon Ball Z. That's, I'm like, I'm trying to remember the name of the show while I'm vamping. Dragon Ball Z. Well, and I think just anime in general does, yeah. does work. That, that kind of epic pose. Yeah. Excuse my garbage truck. I don't know if anybody could hear that. Oh, no, I'm not hearing it at all. <laughs> okay. Do, do, do. Oh, stretch it back. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I'm hunching. Yeah, with these, I feel like it's it's almost not the the detail itself. It's the fact that a lot of these fine details are so close to other fine details. Exactly. It's the awkward angles you have to start tapping into with these. It gets a little tricky in some spots. Yeah, it's like, I did such a good job painting those ears. I don't want to get them all filled yeah. with hair. That's what the old man said. Mm-hmm. I mean, same with the the armor. Mm -hmm. Same with the, the shoulders. Like, ugh. Yeah, it's definitely, you kind of have to go a little bit more methodically with your brush strokes on this zone. And like some parts, yeah, it'd probably be easier with a bigger brush, but one wrong move and just a swath of mini gets painted brown that you don't want brown. Yeah, I've already had to grab a bunch of water once for that moment yeah. of, nope, that's not where the brown's supposed to go. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah, that's not what I meant to do. But yes, slowly but surely we are getting there. Yeah. We... Oh, once again, there's no hurry. No. Quite frankly, I'll be happy if we get Astarian, um paint it up with the black on the base and then do the Xenothal treatment. And that way we'll be good and ready to go for next week for the colors. Yeah. So I'm pretty certain we'll be able to do these and get Astarion set up and ready to go for next week. For color. It is the nice thing about doing multiples of these little minis is it mm -hmm. gives you that go ahead and dry time because that's that's usually the part especially with dry brushing that i get into the most danger is that moment right where it's like okay this is what i'm going to work on next but i don't know if it's dried yet mm -hmm. all right let's let's get your little goatee i think that's a goatee i think the one has a beard and this has a goatee but that might just be my sculpt it could be how your sculpt came out of the mold because mine looks like it has beards on both of them which you know it's facial hair however mm -hmm. you'd like to use it quite frankly all right okay 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 oh mm -hmm. there's a spot behind the ear right like where did the spot now now i have switch and reading rainbow as a mashup in my head help <laughs> how did i get I, my brain there 
I'm kind of impressed. I kind of wish I had that mashup in my head. It's like butterfly in the sky, switch. It's <laughs> just like, nope. <laughs> Throw it over and I can go twice as high. No. <laughs> I Apparently, love, I, lack of sleep is a strange place to be in my mind. Mm-hmm. Or, or you're you're coming up with a new um, mix. There you go. It's fun. You can DJ the next event with your mixtape. That's not how that works. <laughs> I was going to say, works. I love the fact you went to mixtape. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the old in me came out. Sorry. It's okay. Mine shows every so often too. All right, I think I got right. all the hair on the two swords, although I did in the process notice one or two places in where I've I've missed skin. <laughs> so that's where you can go to um, dead flesh and kind of fill in the blanks a little bit. And also we will be doing a, a wow, my brain just stopped working right there. We're going to be it's doing okay. a brown wash or an Agrax earth shade. Oh, yeah, that's true. So, yeah. So that'll help for like the minute little spots that you may have missed. Yeah, I think I think so. These are like little spots here and there, uh, mostly in places in where um, two colors came together, and I, you know, or like where the skin right. and the armor came mm -hmm. together. And I just didn't mm -hmm. quite get them close enough. Yeah, and now I'm noticing it because, of course, I would notice now. Weeks yeah, afterwards, a couple of spots like that where honestly, I'm just like, I may even do like the upside down wash treatment, mm -hmm. so it falls into those little bits. Oh, yeah, that was weird. Yeah, I noticed your main camera is chugging for some reason. Yeah, it can't be your internet though because you look fine. Yeah, this is the camera itself. Oof, that is. Your camera got, got very angry. tired of all of the details. Yeah, I got huh. angry. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, while you look at that, uh, I saw a question come in. Uh, oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, Nee Price Patu says, do you think you know the colors for each mini, or do you have a template that you follow to make it identical to the game character? Uh, well, it's kind of different for each mini. It, a V does... Uh, quite a bit of planning before mm. each show to figure out what uh, what colors are going to go where just so that we have a flow to it. But you can also uh, I've got the the box. If you uh, are not looking to do your own colors or come up with your own thing and you would like to do the paint as, as the official art shows, uh, all these minis come with official art on the back, so you can always use those for reference when coming up with what paints. Um, but at least for this show, because it is a show, I know V does quite a bit of work ahead of time yeah. to to plan it all out. And especially with uh, us turning the drow fighter into a starion, mm -hmm. that obviously we're not going by what's in the uh, what's yeah. in the official art. But that's half yeah. the fun of these minis. Exactly. Um, more often than not for the humanoid minis that we do, it's either, yes, I grab the official art or I look to like, it might be um, skin, a skin that we're recapturing or something like that mm -hmm. um, and use the art from that for inspiration. Like what we do with Okira's or not Okira's, Dahani's uh, Spelljammer skin. Yeah. And, but we also did that for Akira's custom build. Yeah, we did bash. the, we the ancient, ancient Okira. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'll use those pieces of art. Um, sometimes I'll just pick up a mini and I just grab the colors that speak to me and go. Um, but those tend to be more like organic paints when I'm not on screen or it might be one of my own. I haven't done them in ages. So don't don't expect don't hold me to the fact like when I used to just stream mini painting on my YouTube channel. Um, that would be like when I would just like sit there and grab colors. But I had like all of my paints sitting behind me and around me. I could be like, hey, I want this one. Um, yeah. Whereas we're working from our desks, so I kind of have to plot ahead of time. So um, that's the long way of saying there's really no right or wrong way of going about picking out colors for your minis. Uh, the more you do it, the more you kind of play around and find your own approach for how you like to create the looks. I find. Yeah. All right, I think. I and of course, off. because this is a show. Uh... Right. 
we're we're trying to be slightly more prepared Mm -hmm. Uh, prepared is the wrong word um slightly less time taken mulling i'll put it that Mm -hmm. way yeah i don't know what happened with my camera i went back and i dropped the frame rate to see if that would help oh looks fine now but yeah i'm not sure if it's getting might be getting a little hot we'll see we'll see it's a hot day out that could be coming into play quite frankly yeah technology Um, you know yeah so hopefully that won't happen again all right i'm gonna go in now with the gold and i'm gonna do the circlets on the heads yeah i'm fixing a couple spots with the with the dead flesh that yeah i I just don't want it to be that Mm -hmm. that empty like i i just saw a spot under a wrist and it's like okay i know this is a weird angle right that someone would be looking at this mini but now that i've seen it i want to fix it yeah that's definitely fair In terms of how detailed we're going to get with the eyes, I just saw the question out of the corner of my own. Mm. Um, honestly, I'm going to kind of let... Yeah, this might be getting too hot. I'm going to let the wash do the work. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. So kind of just let the wash sort of shadow into the eye sockets is how I'm going to be handling it. Yeah, because they... These are tiny, tiny little eyes. Let me try this. Because <laughs> I will admit, I was kind of wondering about that too. It's like, all right, when we get to these eyes, what? Because this is this is not just toothpick size. This is like tiny, tiny, tiny. Mm-hmm. Not the smallest eyes we've ever done, though. I think that's the the gazer that we did. That's probably oh, the smallest eyes. Oh, those were bitty, eyes. bitty eyes, yeah. yeah. I don't get why this is doing this today. This is new for this camera. It's Unless... never done it before, yeah. It's like Unless you said, it might be the heat. doing an update, it might be the heat. Bear with me, folks. I've done everything I can on my end right now. Outside of ending the stream and resetting a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. Well, the good news is with that, if it's a little jumpy, it's not the end of the world. Because, yeah, when people are looking at it, you're holding it still. So I don't think we need to stop the stream. Okay. But definitely that's, I could see that being something I want to look into later for sure. Yeah. I'm almost tempted to just completely uninstall and reinstall OBS. Just to rule that one out. It, well, yeah, because this is going directly into OBS. So I was about yep. to say, we've already had to do one thing with Zoom yep. today. So, but that was, oh, I just, there you go. Paint, more paint on my light. <laughs> As I'm colorful. pointing, just. It's a colorful light. Yeah, I mean, it is now. Now that it is my dedicated mini painting light, it is, uh got some streaks on it but that's okay are you an official mini painter unless you get paint on your equipment (laughs) streamer i should say official mini painter streamer paint in a place that you don't mean to put paint i mean my microphone has a few streaks of colors on it i've been able to avoid underneath yeah i've been able to avoid the microphone partially because of where it is but also because i have uh the soft squishy on right. top of the microphone. Yeah. And that would be so hard to get off. <gasps> uh hi seeker 30k who says hi. Hello. Uh how was PAX? It was lots of fun but exhausting. Yes. That part. Yep. <laughs> uh I only was there for three days because of oh, I say only like it was just a tiny little bit of time but i uh monday we had all the big anniversary celebration stuff so i was i was here but yeah uh for a good chunk of last week i had a bunch of fun at pax yeah it was good it really was good overall 
Yes. Uh, Nee Price Patu says, I remember when I used to wet the paintbrush in my mouth. <laughs> I don't I, I, even hide it. I'm just like, I'm me. <laughs> just like, ah, ah, ah. I haven't I done do that, that yet, but I have done the, it, I've gotten better at it now that I've set up my space a little differently, right. but I, I have dipped my paintbrush into my drinking cup. That's, that's, that's a thing. thing I've done. Mm. That is absolutely a thing. Okay, so we're going to take um, some of that dark flesh tone and some leather brown and mix them together to make a muddy brown, and we're going to put that on for the base. Okay. That is our next step. Dark flesh tone and leather brown, you said? Yep. Okay. It literally makes like a great mud brown color. Uh, equal parts? Equal parts. Yep. I'll do a quick swatch on my wrist. See? Looks like streaks of mud. Yeah. I'm just going to pop it onto the base here for both of them. Although I might switch my paintbrush because I'm realizing this one's got a little bit of flare that I don't want. Mm. When I get, I'll, I'll switch it out when I get closer to where I need to do detail around the feet. It's got, it's got some of that extra flare. It's got bell bottoms on. It just wants right? to be fancy. Can we talk about flare and bell bottoms and walking into Target and having to walk back out because I thought I walked through a freaking time machine? Uh, sure. Oh, who was I talking to about this? It, I was talking to someone I had a meeting with last week and she and I were joking around about how um, went into Target and Target basically has clothing from when we were teenagers. Like Delia's okay. catalog level of crap i remember seeing that in delia's catalog and everything like that i mean they say that fashion is cyclical and everything comes everything old is new again so well it has it's it... back uh, yep like I mean, the I adidas don't... track sh track pants the yeah camisoles the uh camisoles i'm here pants. for yeah i love those camisoles quite frankly uh but yeah it's it's one of those things where it's back and it was just so weird. And my brain, I think it was like so overwhelmed and tired that day. Yeah. My brain just didn't want to register that this was a trend coming back. It was just like, this is confusing me. I'm feeling overwhelmed. We have to leave. <laughs> yep. Yep. Going to deal with this on a different day. That's what it was. I'm like, I'll go run a different errand. This will happen later. I mean, my only problem with bell bottoms is that I I just know I don't look good in them because I just mm. don't have the correct body shape for it. But, eh, you know, yeah. other people want to wear them. Exactly. It was more just... But camisoles like, are fun. Right here. And um, as uh, cargo pants are the exact opposite in where I of the bell bottoms, in a way. Mm -hmm. I still don't look good in them, but they're way comfier. <laughs> they are super comfy. And utilitarian. Very I very, mean, very, very. I vividly remember not needing a purse through college because, yo, I had eight pockets on my butt. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. that type of thing. It was helpful. I mean, that's uh, the vast majority of the time. My lovely partner is in black cargo pants of some kind. Mm -hmm. And it's it's lovely when he's got plenty of pockets to be able to yeah. hold all the things. Honestly, that threw me when he was in all white that day he came to PAX. Yeah. Cause my, cause for me it was like, okay, so it's like we have Luke on this shoulder telling you, you know, all the mischievous things you can do. And then look, this is Luke who should be sitting on this, this shoulder. <laughs> yep. It was just such a stark difference from how I'm used to seeing him dress. I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. So, so for those that don't know, Luke McKay, my, my lovely, 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 awesome husband um he developed a style a while back uh actually even before we started dating um based on the idea that i think einstein had of i'm just gonna buy one steve outfit jobs. that i know looks good on me yeah i'm sorry what steve jobs oh, was it jobs as well yeah he, yeah he was the black turtleneck and jeans dude Oh, yeah. I, but I don't think he originated the idea. Gotcha. Otherwise, I'd be because I, th I think I remember Luke saying it was an Einstein thing uh, okay. or at least an older of the idea of instead of worrying about what I'm going to look like, I'm going to buy one outfit 
that I know I look gotcha. good, good in and buy like eight versions, eight copies of that outfit. Uh, gotcha. And so he's been doing that for a while. And it's not it's not an all the time, but it was especially going out in public. You would see him in black cargo pants and a green shirt and a green pullover uh, and black shoes. And then over the summer, as we've been work, we've been trying to do walks outside as part of our exercise. Uh, he was getting fairly uncomfortable in the bright sun in all of the black because he mm-hmm. also had workout clothes that were like black. Right. Um, so we, uh, so he ordered some workout clothing in white because, you know, sun. Yeah. And then he looked real good in all white. And so he ordered this set of their linen white pants and a, a white. sharp looking. It, he looks real good in all white, but he doesn't yeah. wear it very often. So yeah, that one day that he came with me to PAX, he was wearing the all white and the number of double takes was impressive. Yeah. It was a good look. Uh, oh, Imaginal like Disc a... says, mm-hmm. I too am one a uh, one outfit only person, just 10 of the same shirt, various colors and 10 of the same pants, complimentary dark, right? Like yeah. I'm... I think if I could get away with it, I would. Uh, I I definitely have a a very simple style, so I come close of like oh, I'm wearing mm-hmm. jeans and a t-shirt or jeans and sweatshirts or jeans, but right. I have enough variety of the shirts. Right. And I am that person who, if I'm Children of Verte is this week, and I'll play on Children of Verte, and next week I will check the vod to make sure I'm not wearing the same shirt even though I've probably washed it and it's clean. I don't want to be right. the person who wears the same shirt twice in a row. Fair. <laughs> but yeah. I, I've done that in the past. I'm like, oh boy. But yes, he is a fan of his outfit. And I, I'm a fan of it too, but yeah, the, the all white is definitely a cool yeah. look. Yeah. But it's after Labor Day, so he can't wear it anymore. Well, I, so I, have, <laughs> I have opinions about that. Okay, so we I got want the base. bases. Awesome. We want the bases to dry a little bit because I do want to do a little bit of dry brushing. Basically, all around these minis is one last enhancement before we do the uh, wash. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> I was going to say the dry wash. I'm like, no, it's not a dry wash. Um, so we're going to go back to Astarion and we're going to need to get dead white, which I may have forgotten to snag for myself. It's that really most brightish white color. Oh, and I did just notice we were at the top of the hour, so we probably just had a whole bunch of folks come in from the game. Welcome. We are halfway through finishing, or mostly finishing, painting the two different different Yankee, but also we have started on the uh, Drow Fighter, which we are turning into Listarian. Listarian. Yeah. And then I think we can announce something cute, right? Because we said we'd announce it at the half. Oh, yeah. Uh, I guess now would be a good time. Um, I will say if you do have any questions about mini painting or idle champions, uh, you can put those in chat with question in big capital letters and we'll be happy to answer them. And now I guess we'll be happy to talk about I'm, I'm going to make sure that the blog is up. Yeah. Uh, yep. It's up so we can talk about it. No. <laughs> <Look at this. laughs> So we, those of you who have been fans of ours for a while are very familiar with Dof- Dr. Rafael Bocamazzo, a.k.a. Dr. B, who is, um, who basically helped us make this adorable familiar as a charity fundraiser for Take This, which is an amazing uh, organization that helps promote positive mental health in the gaming community. And just adorable. The tag, the tagline for this familiar is um, it depends. And I know we have it in Latin and I've forgotten how to say it in Latin. I don't remember from the shirts, but yes. I think it's it is. semper dependent. Yeah, that sounds about right. That probably it, it, I, it's close yeah. enough for jazz. But yes, it means it depends, which is yeah. the uh one of the taglines for uh, Champions of Psychology, which yep. uh, Dr. B is on. So yes, this uh, Psyche, the Amethyst Pseudo Dragon Familiar, will be available starting on Wednesday, the 13th, 
Mm -hmm. uh, and the first week of Psyche sales, which is just fun to say. Psyche the, sales. The first, Psyche sales. The first week of sales of Psyche, the Amethyst Pseudodragon. Dragon, uh, all net proceeds will go to take this. So if you are interested in helping out an amazing charity, especially if you uh, have been going to any conventions this summer, uh, mm -hmm. any of the gaming conventions, uh, they do amazing work at the conventions. They have the mm -hmm. AFK room, which I have taken uh, advantage of multiple times. Yeah. They do some awesome work in the community with helping promote positive mental health, uh, and they can definitely use your support. So Wednesday, also, it's just adorable. It it's so, so cute. cute. The little bow tie is my favorite. Right? It's amazing. It's amazing. So yeah, that that's going to be up and running on Wednesday. Keep your eyes out for this little cutie pie. Like we yeah. said, this was coming. Cuteness is okay. coming. There's a blog up right now. So if you want to read up a little more information yeah. about that, and there will be announcements on Wednesday to remind everybody uh, to, to go ahead and, and pick up Psyche. And I'll put all of our socials in chat real quick. Uh, so that way you can follow us on all the socials and the TikTok yeah. and the, the YouTubes <laughs> and a cat. <laughs> he heard me say cuteness is coming. He's like, you rang? <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. He's he is not, not wrong. wrong. He's a swoosh. Okay, so yeah. let's go back to having some fun with Astarion. Yes. We we're doing Which, dead white. Yes. Uh, someone's going to clip that, having some fun with Astarion, and I'm not going to live that one down. Uh, it's a thing. Listen, when it comes <laughs> to all the Baldur's Gate characters, but very specifically Astarion, right? it yeah. is, it's just going to happen. It's a thing. So we're going to go for dead white, and I'm using one of my larger flat uh, brushes for this. Okay. And I'm going to kind of treat this as we're going to start from a source of light points. We're doing like a, a, a xenophil cheat, essentially. Um, so you want to make sure you're pulling your brush from the same angle as if you're treating this as the light is coming from the same angle. So I'm thinking, how do I want to highlight him up? Kind of want to do across this way as if he's being lit from this side. I was thinking that too, because then that gets yeah. a whole good side of his mm -hmm. face. And mm -hmm. and that's the angle you'd be looking most likely at the mini. Yeah. So that yep. makes sense to yep. me. Yep. So I'm going to just carefully start lightly. Tell me that did not help. Lightly pulling this across the face and purposely putting this white in one general area. just to start highlighting this more. But I'm also gonna go a little bit more light-handed as we get further down the body. So you want it a little bit lighter at the top because that's where most of the light's gonna hit. And this is gonna look a little strange right now. This comes more into play as we start putting colors on top of it. You'll notice the colors at the top have a brighter tone to them and then they go more muted down towards the bottom is really the name of the game here. All right. And now the He's trick got those, is- the, the cool spotlight. Yep. So the trick is, is when we go to rotate him like this, we now want to, source of light has shifted. So we now want to pull the brush back into your hand. Uh, you're going to pull the brush basically from the opposite pull. I find sometimes it helps to put the mini on an angle like that instead of keeping it upright. And you're mm. going to pull so that the light hits as if it were coming from the same source of light, even though you've turned it around. But same thing, a little bit more of the white at the top of the body. And then get a lighter hand going as you work your way down. And just because of how he's standing, the, the back, the leg is definitely going to be mm -hmm. a little bit brighter than the, mm -hmm. the leg on the front. That's kind of yep. cool. You can see and, right here. Yeah. See how there's that difference? This leg is darker than this leg. And then when I spin it around to the front... This arm is lighter than this arm. Spotlight. Yeah. Yep. yep. Very cool. Like I said, it looks a little odd now, but this is something that'll translate more as we get actual uh, colors onto this. 
And I kind of just do one more sweep across the top. Meanwhile, I need a new paper towel for dry brushing. There we there. go. Uh, sober Decay says kind of looks good as it is with the white alone. Listen. Uh, We've done that. There. So Trevor joined you for the beginning of the, mm -hmm. it was the fire giant, right? Um, uh, because yes. I had to, yeah, I had to miss a week. And so Whatever. they did it. I don't think you did the specific Zenithal lighting. I think it was just the black and then it did was the... the shadow layers that I like to do. Shadow so layers. Yes. The shadow layers where it's, it's a graduation of you start at dark black, mid, uh, darker gray, mid-tone gray, lighter gray, very light gray and white. Basically this is your end result. Yeah. And Trevor just kept it as yeah. that didn't go into color because you're right. It looks real cool, right? Yeah. It is. It is a very cool aesthetic. So you're. Yeah. Uh, oh, two on uh, one zero seven seven. What's up with Psyche? I'll give the because you just got oh. in. Welcome. There we go. Uh, the, the very quick is that Psyche, the Amethyst Pseudo Dragon familiar is coming to the game on Wednesday and is a yeah. fundraiser for Take This, which is uh, take this dot org. Yeah. Um, and we have a blog up so you can read all about it as well. Meanwhile. Exactly. Meanwhile, now we're going to shift over to, yeah, mine are looking dry. So we're going to go back to get, get the Yankee okay. and I'm going to snag the bone white because we have that out and do a light dry brushing across the base. Pardon me. And also do a little bit lightly across like the head area where we've just put all the beard and the hair back in color. Okay. So I'll show you what I mean in just a second. Yeah. So taking the brush, dry brush the base. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw Kayleth oh, Marin. Yeah. Happy October Junior, everybody. Right? <laughs> Bring on the fall. Okay, base. Yep. Just on the base to bring out all that fun texture. And then I'm going to move, once I know that I've used a good amount of it up on the base, I'm going to go back up here to the face and the hair and just lightly dry brush around that to bring some texture back out. Okay. Because we're going to do a brown wash on that, so that's going to take on a brown tone. Kind of acts as highlights. Yeah. Yeah, especially for the hair, as mm -hmm. it's got a lot of really cool details. It does, yeah. Just like that. Pretty straightforward. Imaginal disc, not on these minis. These are so small, I'm not going to get into doing like the little pinpoint uh, freckles and such. Um, it's a technique that you actually could do with paint spray. Like uh, you take a paintbrush and you flick it onto the skin. That would have oh. been something we would have needed to have done before we started the armor work and everything like that. It's also very messy. <laughs> Um, so that's why I was like, I, no, not, not in the location in which Lauren and I have to paint. Um, but you could do that. You could just take a paintbrush or even a toothbrush. So what you would have done is you would have painted the, um, skin of the Githyanki and then taken like the leather brown, water it down, put it onto a brush and just have it flick across the Githyanki and it would create like a freckled speckled look to the skin. That does but sound cool, case, but also yeah, a mess. It, it is a mess. So. That's why I chose to forego it for these guys. Yeah, not a problem. Happy to share tips. Some of the tips I always can't, I can't always do because like I said, our locations, um, yeah. but there are ways to do other stuff that's, you know, quick and easy, but also a lot of fun for results. Yeah, I love this show, uh, but I don't want little specks of paint all over my monitor. Right. <laughs> that's just it. Oof. Sober Decay says, this makes me want to bust out my half-finished uh, Rel Parthens and try this out again. Oh, I mean, if, if you would like to join us, you're always welcome. Oh, yeah. uh, let me grab my drink. If, if, you're, if you just want to paint at the same time with whatever you're painting, we are always interested in uh, if you want to put up shots, pictures of what you're mm -hmm. painting on our Discord. 
And if you want to paint specifically along with what we're doing on that, uh, we have the Paint Slay channel on our Discord, discord.gg slash idle champions. Drink. 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 You are welcome to not only put up your own minis that you're painting, uh, mm -hmm. if you're joining, so you're joining us with the Gith Yankee, those minis that you're painting. And then uh, we have pinned posts in there with information about the minis that are upcoming. Exactly. Which I think I get to update pretty soon because I, I updated with the drow turned Astarian. 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 I know. Astarian. The same thing. Ah! I need a stretch. But, but yes. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, just sounds good. Okay. Is it messy because you get the entire mini freckled or because of the monitor microphone as uh, the Prince Putu? The Price Putu. Something like that? I am butchering your name. My apologies. Um, Both. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's both. And then Imaginal is following up with back to Astarion. Do you prefer to have a tool for that type of Zenithal? Oh, you can. There's actually a few tools you can use. Um, I've seen everything from sponges to cotton balls to large brushes to fan brushes from makeup uh, brush lines uh, mm. to, uh, quite frankly, the easiest one to do is an airbrush if you have the space and everything like that, because that's just a spray and you're done. Or the other fun thing you can do, you just have to make, you have to be careful with acrylic spray paints. Um, you could take your minis, put them onto or into a cardboard box, take them outside and stand with the spray can, spray can up near your head and spray down and let the paint naturally fall down into the box as another way to do Zenithal lighting. Um, there's a lot of different techniques out there to get you to a similar result. Uh, I think a lot of it is more preference and how it works for each individual painter though. I will say that. One of these days we'll do like a pre-taped episode Next of like in Seattle. Yeah. And here I am outside doing the outside things yeah. I can only do, yeah. you know, or somewhere where I've got uh, access mm -hmm. to the, a box and I don't have yeah. to worry too much about this. We'll, we'll do exactly. like a, a paint and slay special. Yeah. The transfer stamp idea can work in theory. However, the paint is too wet. Here's a warning. Don't do it because it will pull the paint off. You have to make sure you have a very dry mini of at least 24 hour cure of the paint. I was just reading Henry Lowen's tip right there. Mm. Yeah, I've seen that happen to some people who got very excited about putting on those details and they went to press and it just pulled the paint away. Aww. Yeah, because some rubber erasers from pencils, um, they have almost like an oily finish to it. And it just creates this tackiness. Oh. Yeah. That makes sense. Like, okay. um, Ticonderoga is pretty reliable. Uh, like, cheaper brands, like, you know, your your Walmarts and your um, off brands out there, or your Dollar Tree, they can have sort of, they're not like oily, like you touch it and you have to wipe your hands, but I've noticed the texture can get a little bit more oily-like hmm. um, is the situation. So just be careful. That's all yeah. I'm going to say. Be careful. It does work, yes, but be careful that your paint is definitely dry before you do that accent treatment. Um, I mean, heck, I've been caught in where I think the paint is dry and I start to, yeah. uh, we were talking about this earlier, start mm -hmm. to dry brush and then all of a sudden, whoop, yeah, there oh, it goes. Okay, so speaking of which, I think we're at the point where we should be able to wash the, um, that's my flesh tone wash the Gith Yankees because I would like to get these guys done. So I'm going to go to the umber yeah. wash and we're just going to do a nice warm umber wash because these minis are pretty much all living in the warm tone families except for the silver. But quite frankly, silver with an umber wash does get a really nice result. It gives it more of a worn battle used look to the metal. I think um, I did not grab my umber wash. I grabbed okay. or is this the I, version? Like, this is this is from the Gith Yankee round. So you may not have grabbed that. Yeah. Ah, OK. Totally cool. That's me. It's okay. We're juggling. We're juggling. Once again, this is why having having these doo, 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 doo. On the hand. prismatic paint cats. Yes. Upper wash. There we go. And that was in alphabetical order. Hey, fancy. <laughs> you so fancy. Also, I saw this question come up a little earlier, and now that we've gotten through some of the the painting questions, mm. um, Caleb Marin wants to know pumpkin bread or banana bread i mean i'm a oh. fan of both okay see it depends like if it's like store-bought anything i'll go pumpkin bread hands down mm -hmm. if it's my mom her banana bread 
trumps Ooh. it all. Oh, she makes the best banana bread. Oh my God. Ooh. And I have tried to follow in her footsteps and I cannot get it the way she gets it. But yeah, if it's my mom's banana bread, no question. If it's any other type, no. Yeah. <laughs> Are we doing all the right. umber wash across the whole thing? Yep. The whole cool. kit and caboodle. The whole thing. And I'm uh, actually going to let the wash kind of sit in the eye sockets when I go over the face. Yeah. But give us give us eyes without having to be yeah. doing the small, small things. Uh, keep, keep for me, I, I love them both. It depends on the time of year. Mm. So like right now, I'm leaning towards pumpkin for obvious reasons. Yeah. Uh, but other times of the year, I'd go banana. Go bananas. I was going to say, you go banana or you go bananas? Both. <laughs> but yeah, both are both are real good. But yeah. I think yeah. right now, just because of it being, uh, what, what, what did you say? Pre, Pre-Halloween? Let me look it's that up. October Pre spooky e, time? October Junior. October like Junior. Yeah. <laughs> because it is October Junior. I think I'm going to go uh, pumpkin bread. Yeah, there you go. This may be the weekend I finally give into a little bit of pumpkin uh, pumpkin spice latte, too. I wish I could. I can't. Mm. <laughs> they have dairy I, and it's syrup. Yeah, it it's it's a dessert. It, it also is, the dairy, yeah. but like that's that's why I think maybe this weekend I'll give in is it, oh, it's yeah, dessert. Treat yeah. Absolutely treat yourself. It's delicious, but it is dessert. So I try not to get it, you know. If not for you, for me. <laughs> <laughs> for for you absolutely but i do try to avoid uh picking up any of the incredibly sugary treats yeah for breakfast because that is just asking for Fair. a crash later on right yep power down okay so i'm good with this guy and his wash I'll let that dry and do its thing and i just one. started the other one yeah, I'm about to jump into that one, too. The best part about this is the the musculature on both of these, mm -hmm. on their, especially on their back. The backs, like, that's yeah. where you can tell these these two are ripped. And yeah. the musculature is just, the detail on it is exquisite. They work out. Yeah, and watching that detail come out with the wash is super cool. Mm-hmm. Agreed. It's satisfying. It's like, ah, yes, there you are. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> it's sober decay. Next episode, a banana bread loaf painted into a gelatinous cube. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, could you imagine a uh, uh, not a gelatinous cube, but could you imagine like a mimic getting into uh hey, if I turn into this kind of food oh, item my goodness. during the holidays, I am irresistible. Or, or I mean a gelatinous cube too, but I was just thinking the mimic right. just sitting there and you're going, Oh, banana bread. And then the next thing you know, you are lunch. Yeah. Indeed, indeed, banana bread eats you. Yeah. Uh, DJ Cubicle says, I missed the start of the wash process. Are these straight out of a pot or did you mix your own? Um, these are straight out of a pot because the umber wash comes in the prismatic paint kit mm -hmm. that we've been using. Ah, there we go. Here's here's one of them. Um, but if you did need to make your own, I'm guessing this is a brown wash. So just, yeah. just a, a brown yeah. with a lot of water. Oh, good dark brown. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we have, I have definitely made my own washes on a regular basis, especially when we first started out because I didn't have very much. And now I've spent a little bit of money on, on yeah. some of the, the washes, but yeah, okay, just a, just a basic brown washed down works great. Yeah. So I'm going to let these guys dry before anything else happens again, because once you put the, the wash on, you have sort of moistened the area and you don't want to start pulling paint off accidentally. Um, mm -hmm. So you get to a point, you're like, okay, this is good. I'm going to leave it, let it dry. Yeah. So you're going to live up here for a little bit while we let those dry. And that means we can go back to a style on and start doing some work on him because that dry brushing has definitely had a chance to dry and do its thing. Yeah. Which, yay. I'm mm -hmm. here for it. 
And yeah, I got right, a so, shot oh. from the game that I liked. Because yeah. because I realized our key art doesn't go all the way down yeah. for the boots and stuff. I was like, oh, I need more. Um, so I was looking for full body shots of a star on as I'm sure many other people are. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't watched uh, the interview I did on Idol Insights with Stephen Rooney, <laughs> who was absolutely wonderful and was. and was not only a fun interview, but was very kind and answered some of my questions of like, how do you how do you do this game writing thing? Because it's such a different style of writing and I was fascinated by it. Um, but we did talk about how if you go and follow his social media, he has been having a ton of fun celebrating all of the fan art and the cosplay and all of the other uh, artistic endeavors the fans have done for Astarian. Uh, and for whatever reason, that that you just said reminded me to tell mm -hmm. you, hey, go go follow him on the social medias because yes. then you will get a plethora of amazing uh, Astarian art, which is yeah. harder to say than you think. It is Astarian art. Dar, ar, 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 ar. Astarian art. I'm going to chomp on those words. Ar, 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 ar. Ar, ar. Um, okay, so we're going to go to Pale. Which one? Which one are you? Pale Flesh. Okay. Which is basically your your typical pale porcelain, you know, Caucasian zone of flesh tone. Us us pink people. Us, yes, us pink people. Art Starian. Oh boy. Agent Art Lion, Llama. Good, good. Don't get me started. <laughs> so back I, to a detail brush. Yeah. And it makes sense simply because it's, you know, mm -hmm. he's a vampire. So vampire. Gonna, gonna have gonna that go pale. Hi. very pale, pale, pale. <laughs> Uh, did I miss you? a kitty? Oh yeah, she she just like jumped up behind the space on my seat. She's like, "Hello, mother." Hmm. What's up? I see you are painting a starian, and we are all fans of this vampire. Hello. You heard cute? What are you doing? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> this is her feed me mother face. Okay, so we're gonna go in, and I want to test and see how thick this is. I might thin this out a slight little bit. Okay. Um, because I don't want it doing a full coat, so. I'm gonna do a little teensy tiny drop to the bit that I put on my palette. And then we're gonna put this onto the face and then also onto the hands um, to get this going. And again, we're working with thin layers here uh, for reasons. All Can't right. My paper towel. And I did see Neprice uh, Patu asks at the quote unquote end, will we see a close up of for each mini? Yes. Yeah. Um, V has the nice camera uh, that can do the close-ups. So you'll definitely see here. Uh, I will show off mine as best as I can with my not doing close-ups, but then uh, we both tend to take pictures yeah. and post them on socials so that folks can see uh, the final results. Because yeah, my my camera is a, it's, I have a face cam, so it doesn't have the... The good thing is it's always ready for me right, right here. The bad thing is if you want to show any kind of detail and get up close to the camera, it's like, I'm not focusing on that. I'm focusing on your face. Yeah. It's like, I don't want to focus on that. I want to focus on you. Honestly, your face cam would be a great date. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Thank you, face cam. I want to focus on you in this conversation. Forget the distractions. Which is the the opposite of what a starian would say. She's like, I I want to focus on me in this conversation. Enough about you. Let's talk about me. Exactly. But then again, it's a starian, so uh, you mm -hmm. know, talking about him is very interesting. Now I am going to skirt a little bit underneath the eye sockets. I'm not going to get the paint in the eye sockets. Oh. If you have, that's okay. Okay. I just realized as I was doing it, I meant to mention that. Young lady. Meow. <laughs> I heard that. I heard that little meow. Yep. She getting hungry. I mean, in fairness, me too. So, I mean, I get you. You know, can. it's, yeah, I'm cresting around dinner time and I'm very happy about the fact that I have some yummy leftovers to anticipate. Okay, that's the face. And then the hands. Yeah. Unlike our Gith Yankee friends, uh, Astarian is very well armored. Yes, very much so. Mm. 
Nope, nope, not that. Why, much. why you gotta, why you gotta hold that hand so close to your body? For reasons. Why you gotta do that? Why, why are you so angry? You gotta be holding your fist so close to your body that it's hard to paint. It's worse than elbows. Hey. <laughs> I love it. Hmm. And I think I probably got a little bit in his hair, but that's okay. That's all right. That's why we're doing the hair later. Apparently there's a little texture on the face of mine. I'm trying to cheat now. All right. I'm happy to see, though, that, that while there isn't as much flesh showing as the Gith Yankee, both of them continue to have excellent definition in the hands. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm consistently impressed by the, the details in the fingers. Yeah. Especially when holding a sword. Yeah. Okay, this is not helping me off when I want it to. Okay, so you can see here with the face how this side looks brighter than this side. Mm -hmm. That's because of our zenithal fun, which is what you want. And I'm going back in and just doing a little bit more Detail work on the face, on the cheekbones, on both sides, and the jawline. Yeah, I'm trying to get in. So there's like this weird texture that happened on this face. I'm trying to hide it a little bit. Okay, I'm going to leave that be because we're also going to have additional color going on here. But I'm happy with that for the face. Yeah. Now I'm going to go on to the hums. Oh, and since we're coming up to it, we've got about 15 minutes left. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I know the tiny little, tiny little minis go by fast. If anyone does have any last questions before, um, before we're done, although I'm, I'm going to triple check because schedules have just been a thing been every single week. Around. Yeah. Uh, yes, we do a formation save on after us with the lovely Sean. So if you do have other game questions that don't get answered on this show, stick around for formation save because then Sean will be happy to answer those. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you do have any questions about the minis that we're painting, about our trip to PAX, about Idol Champions, um, I mean, you could ask about Psyche and Astarian and all those fun things, but, uh... But yeah, we'll we'll answer what we can. Uh, but make sure you put question in big capital letters at the beginning of your question so that it's easy for Gabe and I to see it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, just like Caleb Marin did with question uh, <laughs> question on my brain: Halloween or Christmas? Halloween. Halloween. Candy. Um, an imaginal disc. Do you folks varnish your minis to protect them when you are done? Uh, it's not varnish, but... Well, it is Mod a varnish. Podge. Yeah. Is this it is a Mod Oh, yep. mm -hmm. for whatever reason, yep. so I never thought it's it was a varnish. Not, it's not the Mod Podge you get for kindergarten where you do decoupage and stuff. This is a purposely created liquid form um, in matte and gloss. I love using these on my minis. Um, it's a pump action spray, which means if you are limited and you can't go outside and do like the spray varnishes some other companies have, you can just pump this inside your house inside of a box and you don't have like all of this cloud of varnish floating in the air as a result. You can also pop the caps off, which is what I tend to do, and dip your brush in and then just paint the mini as you want to. Uh, so that's what I'll use to seal my minis. And I've been using it for three or four Long years enough. now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think of when they released this because they, they sent it to me early to test it out ahead of time. So oh, I've nice. personally been using it for about four years, I want to say. Mm. Sounds about right. And then it released like three years or so ago, I want to say. 
Yeah. Yeah. And the, the mat is absolutely lovely for uh, that ceiling in of most mm -hmm. of the minis. And then the, the, uh, the glossy is also good, but it's fun using the glossy in specific spots that you want to look, say, slimy or wet yeah. or eyeballs that should look, you know, not dry. Yeah. Um, so picking and choosing ways and places. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Helen's right a there. good example. Helen's eye has the gloss, but her tentacles have the matte. Yep. And so, yeah. Those those bottles, I mean, we bought those at the beginning of the show, yeah. or I bought them at the beginning of the show, yeah. 83 episodes ago, and I still have way more than enough. Yeah. Uh, I got Agent like Llama one. Dozen, Oops, sorry, go ahead. I got like two dozen bottles from them, and I think I'm now down to six. <laughs> Here, have all of the, the gloss and all of the matte. Well, it made sense when I was also making terrain, because it's also great on terrain, I will say that, because sometimes some... Some sealants will melt uh, the foam well, for the terrain builds you, you'll do. Um, this doesn't. <laughs> it's, amazing. Mm. it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Now that makes a little bit more sense because I was literally only thinking minis, but thinking about how yeah. large even a, an average terrain build can be, I could see yeah. using up a good chunk of that. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I got hands. Okay. You got hands. I got the hands. Yeah, I've got the hands too. I think I'm pretty happy with the hands at this point. Yeah. Okay, so from that, let's move over to how much time do we have? We have some time. Uh, have 10 minutes. Sweet. So then um, we're going to let that dry and then we're going to do Stonewall Gray mm -hmm. on the hair. Stonewall no, gray. that's silver. There we go. And again, thin it out. Thin it out. Thin it out. Rawr. I don't know why I just went to parrot mode, but here we are. <laughs> but, you know, it's what it's almost do? the end of a day on a Friday. So what can you do? I'm sure the audience is used to my getting punchy towards the end of each episode because my body's like, hey, you know what? It's almost 5 p.m. on a Friday. <laughs> yeah. Hey, even for me, it's almost 2 p.m. Right? on a Friday. Like This is also it's... like my first weekend in two weekends because <laughs> i worked the past two weekends <laughs> with travel and all that so yeah i think my body's like um everybody's working for the weekend that song <laughs> yeah yeah i i worked last weekend but because it wasn't a travel because pax right. west happens right here in seattle and i am in the pacific northwest so it was very easy for me to go to and then be able to go home and sleep in my own bed which makes mm -hmm. a huge difference it do oh boy do it ever yeah um like you know if we go out again next year and stay at the same place i'll probably sleep better because i'll be used to the hotel at that point mm -hmm. but whenever i'm in a new hotel i never sleep well for those first few nights and the problem is was the um switcherooing of ho hotels because mm. we were in different locations at different points. Um, that just, that threw me for a loop. And then all the walking that happens. Yep, just being tired after a con is, is yeah. just, you know, even though it's at this point now been a couple of days, it takes a while. And especially since you you flew home and then just went right back to work. Um, there was yep. no time off. So yeah. we're a little punchy. Just a little bit. I've, a little bit of free time this weekend but i've i've actually got a full weekend doing recording and uh playing in d4 on sunday so like all good Ooh, things all happy yeah. things uh yeah but definitely my weekend is already packed do my weekend is going to be packed with baldur's gate 3 because this is the first weekend i have to sit down and just genuinely tootle around and play good I'm like i cannot wait enjoy yeah i've had like a couple little hour bursts here and there but i haven't had a chance to like devotedly immerse myself and just the way i play the game is i explore every nook and cranny i just i look at everything and i read yeah. everything yep so yeah <laughs> nope i'm i'm the same way i like to go slow i like to be able to see as much yep. as possible i've been watching a lot of of uh, streamers playing mm. Baldur's Gate 3, both friends and acquaintances and people we work with. Um, and it's not only been fun to see the different ways that people have been playing, um, yeah. 
but like all the different options that people have been picking. Uh, I've been watching a lot of DM Jazzy Hands, a friend friend of Idol Champions, Eugenio yes. Vargas, who is doing the same thing on his uh, streams of just going real nice and yeah. slow and doing all sorts of stuff. And he's also getting suggestions from the audience for uh, dialogue options. So he's not, I think he's still in act one, but you get to see all yeah. the little crunchy detail and have some fun That's conversations. That's a fun thing. Okay, so debating what next move would be good with here. Um, well, is there anything else we need to do on the Gith Yankee? Because we're in our last the seven Gith minutes. The Gith Yankee are, they're looking pretty solid in my book. Yeah. Um, The eyes might be something, if you decide you want to add eyes, go for it. I might, when I have better natural light, whenever I, whenever I have tiny little humanoid eyes like this, as great as these lights are above, I find natural light is my favorite way to paint eyeballs in. Um, so I might, I might do eye treatment tomorrow morning, depending on what the weather's like. Um, but you honestly don't have to, cause when you start doing the three foot rule because of the wash, yeah. it's sitting in the recesses of the sculpt. So, oh, hi, Hemi. Um, so you can get away without doing the eyes. If that's not a comfort zone for you, you don't have to do the eyes, but they are looking, let me pull this back around. They are looking pretty much set and ready to go. Yeah, I'm liking how these look. I, about, yeah. I think I'm in the same boat as you with the eyes. I might tomorrow try to, because it's smaller than even the toothpick. I think this is going to be yeah. tiny, like They're a couple hairs eyes. of a brush. Because they have like the furrow brow thing going on, which naturally shrinks the eye shape itself. It's a little bit more of a finite, very careful approach. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm just saying it's more one of those things you want to be thoughtful and not have a whole bunch of things in your way. Uh, it helps when you have freedom and no camera in front of your face. Yeah. And um, uh, so I'm looking at Lazelle and uh, she's got the obvious white. Right. Uh, same kind of thing for these these two. Yep. I would start off. Um, actually, if you wanted to, you could darken the socket with like um, the flesh tone mm -hmm. and make the socket dark and then put the white layer in um, and then do a little dot of pupil. And that'll kind of give it more of like a um, eye shape. And when you put a dark color in first in the eye sockets, when you do mini eyes, it keeps the eyes from looking like cartoon white um, yeah. because you get sort of this natural lining around the eyeballs, almost like a shading by putting okay. the darker color into the socket first. All right. Yeah. But that, that'll be for tomorrow morning. Yeah. But this is yeah. the other guy drying up. But yeah, I do agree that it's not necessary, but not needed. if that's, yeah, for those of you who are following at home and you're not comfortable, hi, you a lion? <laughs> <laughs> you just, I don't know if the, if the camera picked or the microphone picked it up, he just went like, <laughs> was, was, was trying to be intimidating uh, right? with those good Yankee in your hands. Yeah. So that's them. I'm really happy with how they came out, especially because of that combination of the silver. I'm glad we did the gold edging trick. Because that really makes that armor pop out. A little yeah. Bit and then we'll pick up with a star on next week. We have the hair started and the face started. Yeah. And we'll get into doing the clothes and everything. And of course, because we did the Zenithal stuff, because we're working with the very lightest of colors, it's not popping as much and showing you how it really shifts. Um, but to the naked eye, there is a stark difference. Um, but yeah, we have a little bit more highlighting work to do around the face and the hair, and then we'll start working our way down the body is the plan for a star on next week who hopefully it will get him finished next week. If not, we'll, you know, take it into the week after, there which you is go. totally cool and okay. Yeah, we can absolutely work with that. Uh, and we then... got a quick couple of questions, although neither of us might be able to accurately answer this question. Rat mm. with wings wants to know favorite Baldur's Gate three companion. And are you romancing them? Um, oh. I'm, I don't have a favorite at this moment, although I know a heck of a lot about Astarian and Lazel simply because of preparing for mm -hmm. them coming in the game. And I haven't played enough Baldur's Gate three myself to get very far in the game. Like V time, time has been a <sighs> thing. And when nice. I've spent time with these characters and, and this is, this is going to sound like I'm complaining about a good thing, but I'm not. I've had to do a lot of work on these characters before they yeah. came out. So I've yeah. been kind of living with these two for oh, a couple of months. Um, yep. So I haven't really played that much of the game. Yeah. But... I, I'm kind of gravitating towards, and I also did like the, um, 
early access. So honestly, like, I don't know if I'm going to fully romance them. It's not on my radar, but I, I have an affinity for both Will and Gail. Ah. I will say that. I do like those two. Um, the one the one thing I'm going to make sure to do the next time I have a chance to really sit down and play is make sure that what whatever characters I have, that they can all speak with animals. Because every time I've seen a clip of any of mm-hmm. these characters doing the speak with animals thing, it's amazing. And it's it is wonderful. It's everything I wanted. Yeah. Uh, I won't spoil any of it. I'll just say there's a there's a cat you can speak to uh, in a place that looks like it's one of those the the hairless cats. Oh, the Sphinx. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have a we have a mutual friend who was going Gonzo. I got a text message. I'm like, he found the Sphinx. <laughs> he found the, that conversation is amazing. Yep. And if you get if you see this cat, talk to this cat. I won't tell you what happens. I will just tell you talk to the cat. Talk to the cat. All right. Yeah, speak with then... animals is a must. You right. must have it. Don't forget, right now we are in season five in the game. Log in and get all your lovely things going on for season five. If you start it up with all of that loveliness, it is featuring our Act Inc. champions, uh, specifically Omen, Jim, Evelyn, Strix, and... Bye. Vi. Vi, thank you. I'm like, I always forget one of them. And it's always a different one each Me time. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Uh, so we have that going on, and then we've been talking about Astarion, but Astarion is available to unlock in the game right now during Bright Swords, which I find so appropriate. Um, so mm-hmm. yeah, check that one out as well. And then along with that, you can have fun and do the weekend buff. If you haven't signed up for the newsletter, why not? We send you a newsletter once a week where we send you a free thing. And this week it is the free gold lethal chest. Uh, so that's going to have some goodies for you in there for your champions to help you I- get things done. I have to say, I love this. Ch- the The weekly chests, the weekend chests are always astonishingly good. Mm-hmm. This one also really good. But every time I see it, I think that it's, um, you know, that old magic trick and where you put someone in a box and you stick all the swords uh-huh. in it and then you pull all the swords back out. And the person's yeah. fine. Yay. Magic trick. This looks like someone was doing that trick and we're getting to see the back yes. of the box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it cracks me up. Um, I will say next week's chess because I got to preview that this morning. I can't wait for you all to see it. <laughs> Maddie has knocked it out of the park for next week. They um, usually That's do. all I'm going to say. That's all. I'm, I'm going to leave you teased on that one. And then mm. just announced Psyche, the Amethyst Pseudo Dragon, the Take This Charity Familiar. That is going to be available as of September 13th at 12 p.m. Pacific. All net proceeds from the first week of sales will be going towards Take This. And thank you to Dr. B, our good friend from Champions of Psychology and good friend of CNE in general. Uh, he helped us create this adorable little cutie patootie. Uh, so yeah, definitely make sure you add her to your uh, formations as a familiar Starting September 13th, you don't want to sleep on that one because then all the net proceeds, like I said, they're going to take this during that first week. I think, I believe, that is all. I, I think so, too. I think it's just and time for so, us yeah. to get out, go go, and, and have some food. And yes. uh, you want to stick around for Formation Save with Sean, Absolutely. which will be coming so, up in nine minutes. Yes. So thank you to Gabe. Thank you to chat. Have a great weekend, everyone. And we will talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.